Welcome back to our broadcast. President Trump has repeatedly downplayed his business ties to Russia, but a fascinating new piece of journalism tracks three decades of Russian money connected to Trump properties. Uh, Trump's Russian laundromat reads the headline in the New Republic, quote, whether Trump knew it or not, Russian mobsters and corrupt oligarchs use Trump's properties not only to launder vast sums of money from extortion, drugs, gambling, and racketeering, but even as a base of operations for their criminal activities. Without the Russian mafia, it is fair to say Donald Trump would not be president of the United States. That is a weighty charge. And with us tonight, the author of this piece, Craig Unger, a contributor at the New Republic. Before I even let you say a word, I've got another paragraph I want to read to you that you wrote. Over the past three decades, at least 13 people with known or alleged links to Russian mobsters or oligarchs have owned, lived in, and even run criminal activities out of Trump Tower and other Trump properties. Many used his apartments and casinos to launder un told millions in dirty money. Some ran a worldwide high-stakes gambling ring out of Trump Tower in a unit directly below one owned by Trump. So, weighty charges indeed. When I ask you, when I meet you on the street, what, the basic question, what is it about Trump and the Russians? Which may be even harder to answer. How do you answer? Well, there's been a lot of great reporting about Trump and the Russians lately, but if you want to know when he was first compromised by the Russians, I go back uh, 33 years to 1984, and at that time, a guy named David Bogdan walked into Trump Tower. He was a Russian immigre, and he had ties to the most powerful crime ring in, in Russia. And he sat down with Donald Trump, and he bought not one apartment, not two, but five condos in, in Trump Towers. And the state attorney general later you ruled that, that that was laundering money. And Trump Towers, in many ways, had been set up as a perfect vehicle for money laundering. It was one of, at the time, it was one of only two buildings in New York City uh, where anonymous people could use shell companies to buy condominiums. Um, do you, <clears throat> is there a quid versus a pro quo? I mean, with Trump having been accused of being so transactional, is there a long um, debt, this, this reason to bend over backwards to show Russia and Putin the benefit of the doubt. What's the active extortion compromise threat that you allege that you found? Well, I think in the early days it was probably simply a matter of money laundering. The, the, the Russian mafia got their money laundered and Trump sold a lot of condos and presumably didn't ask questions. Uh, but things changed dramatically around 2002. And at the time, Trump uh, was still reeling from his massive expansion in Atlantic City. He had ended up with owing $4 billion to 70 banks. I mean, those are not the kind of things you want on your resume if you're going to be running for president of the United States. And in 2002, a company called Bayrock moved into Trump Tower. It's a real estate company. And it, too, allegedly had ties to the Russian mafia. And they made uh, Donald Trump an offer he could not refuse. They were going to put up about a billion dollars in financing. Trump put up zero, and yet he got 18% of the profits on their joint ventures. Was he aware of all of this all the way along? And we recommend to our viewers, it's a long piece, but set aside some time and read it. Uh, was he a, an unwitting participant? You know, I have no idea what was going through Donald Trump's mind, and I don't you think that's that the kind clear? of thing. Uh, but I, I think you can see that from the, the way the building was set up and the massive amounts of, of you know, finding 13 people, Frankly, I think that's the tip of the iceberg, and the reason I think that is that a huge number of uh, people who buy the condos use these shell companies. Since the election, about 70 percent of the sales in Trump-branded condos have been through shell companies, so there's no way for reporters to penetrate that. A special counselor, though, uh, counsel is another matter. Especially one who has hired first-rate attorneys, especially in this area of financial crimes. Again, an exhaustive piece. We recommend everyone read it, meet your own conclusions. We thank Craig Unger for stopping by our studios tonight. Thanks for having me, Brian. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.